Assalamu alaikum viewers please like share and subscribe this channel links of pdf files used in this video are given in description so today's lecture is about practical demonstration of estimation of chlorides by argentometric titration and in this particular titration we will adopt adsorption indicator method now the whole chemistry involved in this titration is described in this slide and we will also get the answer that why we have so the question of this titration is to determine the amount per liter of kcl in a given sample solution volumetrically you are provided with 0.025 molar silver nitrate as standard solution so again this is argentometric titration and we know that those titrations in which silver nitrate is used are called as argentometric titrations as greek word of silver is argentum so chloride or kcl is our analyte whereas 0.025 molar silver nitrate is our standard solution previously we have carried out this titration by using mohr's method in which we have used k2cro4 as an indicator but in this titration we are using another method which is called as adsorption indicator method so basically it is again a precipitation titrant titration silver nitrate is titrant and precipitating agent while kcl and particularly chloride act as analyte so this is an adsorption indicator method and which indicator we are using so we are using fluorescein as an adsorption indicator the end point of this titration is pink color precipitates which is the end point of this titration and these pink color precipitates are found because of the silver and fluorescein complex now the pink color is formed by physical adsorption of fluorescein dye on silver ions so we can say safely here that this is adsorption indicator method because fluorescein dye is deposited physically on silver ion so that is why we get a pink color precipitates so how this titration proceeds and what is the procedure of this titration we will see in the upcoming lecture in usual titration method we give the instruction to the students that we should shake the flask well so that the contents mix together or have a proper interaction but in this titration we give the instruction of swirling of flask rather than shaking swirling is actually a regular movement of flask rather than random movement or shaking so we make the flask in rounds so we swirl it so that the fluorescein indicator gets deposited on the silver ions and we avoid shaking so that here in this titration the layers are formed and layers are only possible by swirling of the flask so why this swirling is needed we will see next in the procedure so here is the experimental setup of this titration as usual silver nitrate is a titrant so we will take it in the purette it is not acting as a titrant but is also is a precipitating agent we will take 10 ml of kcl or sample solution in the flask and we will add 2 to 3 drops of fluorescein indicator in this flask so as we add fluorescein the color turns into yellow green so which is dominant due to the color of free form of fluorescein but what will happen as we add silver nitrate from the burette then this solution will turn into a cloudy yellow solution and slowly slowly around the end point this color will change now it is very important that we have to swirl this flask in a regular circular motion rather than to randomly shake them because here the layers are formed and these layers will uh, cause to reach the end point so that is why we will induce swirling as compared to 
shaking which is performed in other titrations so this is the structure of fluorescein as we are seeing here that there are fused rings in this structure and also heteroatoms are present all these uh, things like the fusion of rings uh, induce extension of conjugation and the presence of heteroatoms these extend further this conjugation so all these favors to glow the fluorescein and that is why this fluorescein indicator is also called as dye because it glows and it produce fluorescence phenomena now as we add silver nitrate in the flask it will react with chlorides to form silver chloride ppts but as all the silver chloride get precipitated the next drop of silver nitrate will react with fluorescein indicator and it will make a complex with fluorescein and this complex is of pinkish color so as we are seeing here that the color turns into a pink so this is the end point of this titration now what is happening here that this is the structure of fluorescein so this hydrogen is removed and it is change into this negative form and silver is attached with this now this complex is formed and its color is actually light pink so this is the end point of this titration now the whole chemistry involved in this titration is described in this slide and we will also get the answer that why we have to swirl the flask rather than to shake so in the beginning of titration we have reached into stage 1 as we have dropped few drops of silver nitrate so it will form silver chloride now this silver chloride get deposited in the form of particles still in this solution as we have not reached the end point so first layer is formed of chloride ions and then second layer is formed of potassium ions this first layer of chloride ions which is physically adsorbed on the silver chloride ppts this is called as primary adsorption layer whereas the second layer is of uh, potassium ions now the question arises here why kcl is present um, uh, uh, around the silver chloride precipitates because we have reached stage 1 and still silver chloride precipitates are formed but still in the flask in excess amount there is KCl present and second question is why chloride have made the first ring as uh, potassium can also make the first ring and chloride can make the second ring then why it is necessary to make the primary adsorption layer of chloride and secondary adsorption layer of potassium the reason is that again silver chloride so due to the common ion effect first chloride ions uh, will be if forming the primary adsorption layer and then the uh, secondary ions uh, of potassium will more will make the secondary adsorption layer so this is the first stage of titration after first stage we have now reached into stage 2 in this stage all the silver chloride has been precipitated and it has been deposited in the center so now extra drops of silver titrant silver nitrate will come and they will make primary and secondary layers because now all the kcl has been converted into hccl and hence has been deposited into the center now the first layer will be of silver ions which is called as primary adsorption layer whereas secondary layer will be of nitride ions which is called as secondary adsorption layer now again the question is why nitrate is present in the first layer and silver in the second layer why not so the answer is that due to again common ion effect as silver chloride is present in the center so first layer will be of silver ions and then second layer will be of nitrate ions so stage one was at the initiation of the you know, titration as we have dropped few drops of silver nitrate stage 2 is actually the equivalence point at which all the silver chloride has been deposited in the center and stage 3 is the end point where the role of uh, indicator comes so as all the silver chloride has been in the center 
and uh, it is surrounded by the excess silver nitrate so first layer is of silver ions because of the common ion effect silver is present in the center so that is why the first layer will be of matching ions and that is silver and scanty layer will be of nitrate ions in the meanwhile as we swirl the flask what will happen that fluorescein which we have added and uh, it will uh, react with the silver ions and will deposit physically on silver so in this way this whole solution turns into pink so as we are seeing here that the whole solution turns into pink because of the complexation between the fluorescein ion and the silver ion so that is why we have now reached the end point and that this is the answer that why we are swirling we are swirling in order to promote formation of primary and secondary adsorption layers and if we shake this flask randomly these layers are destroyed and the color also turns pale but when again we swirl the flask and these layers are formed and in the second layer when the fluorescein comes and it deposits on the site of silver ions so the color turns into pink and this pink color is due to formation of this complex and this is the end point of this titration as we have seen in the picture above. So next we reach hmm, at the stage of observations and calculations. So we will take three readings as we are seeing in the readings 15 ml of titrant or silver nitrate is used so mean volume of silver nitrate used is 15 ml so on one side we will write silver nitrate on other side we will write kcl and we will use the molarity formula so this m1 is actually the molarity of silver nitrate which is given in the question v1 is the burette volume which has been used m2 we want to find that and v2 is the volume which is taken in the flask so this is m2 we want to find and after rearrangement we get its value which is 0 0.0375 so in order to determine amount per liter of chloride we will multiply this molarity with the atomic mass of chloride so the answer is 1.331 gram per liter and in order to determine the amount per liter of kcl we will multiply this similarity with the formula weight of kcl which is 74.5 so the answer is 2.793 grams per liter so the result of this titration uh, is that the given sample solution contains 2.793 gram per liter of kcl so this was all about today's titration i hope you have well understood this procedure but still if you find some question or want to have further explanation please uh, make your question in the comment section of this video i will respond to your query as soon as possible okay thank you allah hafiz